Uh, my only disclosure is I'm a consultant for Endocyte, which has nothing to do with this talk. So my objectives of uh, this talk are number one, we're going to describe the role of uh, FDG PET-CT in initial evaluation of head and neck cancer and for suspected unknown primary tumor in the head and neck region. We're going to look at the utility of PET-CT in the TNM staging and lymph node stations. And lastly, we're going to describe the role of PET-CT in therapy response evaluation. So in terms of epidemiology in the U.S. for head and neck cancer, there are about 62,000 new cases in 2016 and about 13,000 deaths. Uh, the most common risk factors associated with head and neck cancer are alcohol, smoking, uh, HPV uh, has, uh, you know, in the last uh, decade and a uh, couple decades uh, been a more, um, you know, prevalent uh, cause of uh, head and neck cancer and is a different subtype. It's very interesting if you look at this graph here, this is depicting the use of cigarette smoking, which has gone down over the years, but you can see that for oral pharyngeal cancers, the decrease is not that dramatic. It's also not that dramatic for laryngeal cancers as well. So a lot of that has to do with alcohol and probably HPV uh, as a risk factor. So in terms of pretreatment staging of head and neck squamous cell cancer, we're going to look at the TNM staging. We're going to discuss the treatment options and the role of PET. So, you know, treatment options include surgery, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy. Uh, often uh, is a combination of these uh, treatment options. So in terms of imaging for the primary tumor, um, the recommended study is either contrast-enhanced CT or contrast-enhanced MRI for evaluation and delineating the extent of the primary tumor. PET does have a, um, a role for the local uh, uh, tumor for initial staging, but it's much more helpful for regional and distant metastatic disease. It's also very helpful to response to therapy and detecting recurrent metastasis. So in terms of the uh, NCCN guidelines, so this is the National uh, Comprehensive Cancer Network guidelines, which I use for a lot of uh, um, you know, my evaluations for different types of cancers. For head and neck cancer, the main impetus is that for um, head and neck cancer, you should consider FDG PET-CT in the initial treatment strategy evaluation for advanced stage three or four uh, head and neck cancers and also for unknown primary. So here's a question to the audience. After completing radiation or chemoradiation for local advanced head and neck cancer, the minimum duration one should wait before obtaining an FDG PET to assess treatment response is A, 6 weeks, B, 12 weeks, C, 18 weeks, or D, 24 weeks. So how many people say A, 6 weeks? How about B, 12 weeks? Okay. And C, 18 weeks? How about D, 24 weeks? So most people said B, 12 weeks, and that's usually the recommended recommendation about three months um, after uh, chemoradiation. 